we've talked about how to create items or records in our database. Now let's talk about the next operation. Let's talk about reading the data or fetching the data we created in our database. Now we can fetch either a single item, we can fetch multiple items or all the items in the database model. So let's start by fetching all the items in the database table or model. So let's fetch all the students in the students table. So let's just so we have, let's see how many students we have. We have three students. So let's fetch them all. So students equals students dot object dot all. Oh, I'm forgetting it's not students. Yes. So students becomes so we can see the query set that is being returned when we actually uh, try to fetch all the items. It returns all the students in that given database table. So it returns the students with an ID of four, returns the student with an ID of five, and returns the students with an ID of six. Now let's let's return or let's fetch just one single student. Now, to fetch a single item from our database, we use the get method. So we do something like this. Let's fetch a student with an ID of four. So student let's call four equals students dot object dot get ID equals four. Then four is So we've been able to successfully fetch that student. So let's actually see who the student is. So we can do that by specifying the attribute. So student four dot first name. So John. So in our table, John is the first student here. And we can see that we are now fetching the student. Now, if you're wondering why um, Django gave the ID four, five, six instead of one, two, three. Uh, this is because prior to this video tutorial, I was um, testing, so I created three objects. So um, three students before. So when you do that and you delete them, Django does not actually keep that ID. It also deletes the ID along with the students. And that is why it's assigning the next students with four, five, six. Now, let's use a, a, a method to fetch multiple students. Now, to do that, let's create two more students with the same um, attributes. So let's, let's do that. So students dot objects. Dot. Okay, now. Dot. And let's use the create method. I really don't like using the create method that much. So, school, or oh, we'll get an error because we haven't created the school. Okay, so there's even a school attribute here. Okay, right to high, right, right. So, let's just do that. First thing was done. Second name equals Josh. Oh, it's me. His last name. Age equals 
it is an integer field, so age equal to 34. And let's leave that. So it creates the student with an ID of seven. It creates the student and gives it an ID of seven. So done. Let's create another one. So, but this time, let's call this person Daniel. Let's call this Joshua. And let's give it the, an age of 34. Um, so, now, what if we want to query our database such that we want to return all the users with the age 34? Now, we have a method to actually do that. It's called the filter method. So with the filter method, we can return multiple data in our database. We can also use the filter method to return a single data, but it is very much easy to return multiple data using the filter method. So let's get right to it. So this is students equals students dot objects filter age equals 34. So let's see students with age 34. So it returns student 5, student 7, and student 8. So I will have a student with age 35. Okay. Oh, was it 34? 34. So Rebecca has an age of 34. So it returns Rebecca, Daniel, and Dan. So this is just an example of how you can use the filter method. Let's say we want to return um, with an ID of seven. The person, the student with an ID of seven. So student, dot, student, dot object dot filter id equals and you see it returns uh, the students with an id of seven so you can also use the filter method to return a single uh record in our database but you cannot use the get method to return multiple data in our database so what happens when we try to use the get method to return that let's see what happens let's copy out this code but instead of filter let's use the get method so we get this error that says get return more than one student it returns three so we can only use the get method to return something that is unique to only one record so if it is not unique to that record, it will return, it will throw an error. So let's say we want to return someone with the name age 40. So I don't think I have any other person with age 40. So let's see. So, so oh, suppose, I'm supposed to change that to students. He returns the student with an ID of four, and that student is done. So this is how to use the filter and the get method. Now you are not only limited to these um, methods to query our database. In fact, the filter method contains so much more. You can specify uh, if your record is greater than or is less than a particular number using the filter method. You can specify if your record contains a particular substring. I think I should just do that. So let's see. Student equal student equal event but object or filter. So let's see. Okay. So, um, first name, yep, 
dot contains so let's say i contains equal and let's see if this will return say so manager is at the far okay ah sorry she got this i do not know why i i keep making this student's mistake So let's see what happens. So students, so it returns the students with an ID of eight and it returns the students with an ID of seven. So this is, that is Dan and Daniel. So this says, oh, does Daniel contain, uh, do the uh, strings or do the records return, do they contain the substring Dan in their first name? And, the answer is yes. So returns Daniel and Dan. So this is just one way you can use the filter method. There are so many ways you can use the filter method. I advise you to go read up on them and just refresh or reverse on them. So uh, we'll be moving over to the next section that talks about updating data in our database.